Hello, pet enthusiasts. My name is Jason Zakowski. I'm the dog dad of Bunsen and Beaker, the science dogs on social media. My co-host is... Chris Zakowski, a.k.a. Mummy Babe, who just accidentally shared the tweet of the pet chat <laughs> into the space uh, as opposed to on my thread. So <laughs> that happened. <laughs> well, every week on Saturday, we gather to play some games, share some stories, announce some cool things, and of course, let everybody else who's part of the community share their own pet stories. Today, we are live on Clubhouse on Wisdom and Twitter Spaces. And for the first time ever, and I knew it would work, we are on the Paw Pack Plus, the community that Chris and I, uh, Chris and, Chris and I developed. So in case Twitter Spaces goes away or in case Twitter flames out, um, we can make the pop pet, we can make pet chat for free for everybody and run it through the Paw Pack. So I'm, it's working great and the audio quality is excellent. So I'm just so excited about that. So I don't know if you got a notification, Chris, but um, we're live on the Paw Pack right now. There's a, a couple people listening right now on the Paw Pack, which is cool. I love that. Yeah. And uh, and because the audio is direct there, it doesn't have to bounce through Twitter. Everything is is of a super, super high quality, which is awesome. Okay, so I was just a little bit distracted. I'm going to put up in the nest. We would love to start with our game. We usually start with a a really fun game called Kahoot. And um, I'll throw that into the nest. And if you're on Wisdom, it's the Kahoot.it. It's it's the code that you'd have to put in. So you got to go to Kahoot.it 7905467. If you're on Twitter Spaces, it's in the nest. It's the Kahoot game in the nest. If you're on Clubhouse, it's the pinned link and um, the paw pack. Actually, I can make that available in the chat for the paw pack. So Uh, Jason, it's not in the nest. It it is. I I put it up there. There it is. Yeah. Sometimes it's delayed, which is kind of which is kind of frustrating. So uh, I will put I will put the. The link to cahoots in the net in the nest right there. <clears throat> so we'll give everybody. Oh, okay. Um, we'll give everybody a few seconds to log into Kahoot. Oh, there. We're now we've got a whole bunch of people. We've got Bianca. Bianca. We've got Bzzz, Jess, Snake, Megan, Ivy, Mrs. Don, Zeus, Kathy, L. Oh, even more people are logged. Nancy again. Silky. <laughs> oh, look how many people are playing. You guys rock. There's like. There's almost 30 people playing tonight, Chris. Do you see a moose with a pie on its head? Is that is that you? Chris, how many times do I have to tell you you can't play Kahoot against everybody else who's not like you have insider information for this game? You don't care. Um, <laughs> what? What? Okay, we'll give everybody 10 seconds, and then we're going to get started. 10 seconds, everybody, and then we'll play some Kahoot. Did you know there's new there's new things on Kahoot? We're going to try it next week, Chris. Um, you know the time to climb on, on Nearpod? They have similar games now on Kahoot. Really? That's awesome. I know, but they're, they, you, Kahoot has been pushing educators to have to pay so they're, they're giving you a little taste of the free games and then they're going to go away. But next Saturday, we're going to play the submarine version. So instead of getting points um, for first, second, third, fourth and fifth, you get points to not get eaten by some aquatic monster. So uh, we'll see how that goes next Saturday. <laughs> OK, we're going to start, everybody. We've got 30 people playing. Here we go. Time to play Kahoot. All right, here we go. Question number one. How many moose did we see this week? <laughs> Two, three, four, or one? Now I'm, Chris might get caught on this one. How many I think mo- I already did get caught. How many moose did we see this week? And the correct answer is three. Three moose. Three meese? 
What is it? What is the plural of moose? Just more moose? It's just more moose. But not mooses, right? No, definitely not mooses. That's so weird. Yeah, we did see three. Um, I saw two with Bunsen and Beaker, and then you and Adam saw a moose today. Right. What's that comedian that had people were posting links to him? Um, Gallif- no, uh, he's he's the older guy with the beard. Do you know the guy's name? I need more than the comedian with the beard. He was he had a joke about moose and how Gallagher Gallagher. No, it's in. I can't. I've got too many technology things going on. Somebody can probably tell us in the chats. Uh, Comedian with a beard who told a moose joke. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it doesn't matter. OK, let's uh, let's go to the next question. So we've got Bianca in first Moon Pie, Carousel, Kelly and L.A. OK, here we go. On the Science Podcast this week, Jason talked about this thing he hates so much. So what did I talk about this week that I hate so much? How country music sounds all the same now. Daylight savings time. Kale. Having to update video games before you can play them. Now, Kate, was it Jim Gaffigan? Jim Gaffigan. There it is. Jim Gaffigan. But that's not the answer to this question. The correct answer is daylight savings time. I do appreciate the number of people who clicked kale. Um, but we had a, I did a science story about daylight savings time and how it's really bad for us, and it's very dumb, and we need to get rid of it. We need to just do standard time and not daylight savings time. Um, Because after daylight savings time, everybody's sleep is off an hour, and you're out of sync with the sun, and it's really bad for teenagers, all of this stuff. Anyways, it's on the Science Podcast this week. Okay, we've got, uh, oh, big, we've got Snake in first, Nancy, LA, Kelly, and then Jess. Okay, next question. Our SciChat guest this week said we were all made of this. Bugs, hair, tubes, cells. Wasn't that guest so good, Chris? She was so fun. She was so fun and awesome. Yeah. 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 All right. Dr. Bowen, I believe. She's looking for work. That's right. Oh, so many people got it right. I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah, it was tubes. We're all made of tubes. She studies the um, pancreas specifically and that our whole bodies is basically just a whole bunch of tubes. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Oh, LA's on fire. Nancy, Nancy again, actually. Jess, Kelly, and time out. Okay, question four. This week in text from Bunsen, Bunsen eluded Elon Musk again by paying nine bucks a month for Twitter bacon driving a Tesla getaway car, having a burner phone, winning in a meme war. You know, with the way things are going on Twitter, all of those are definitely possible. Okay, how did Bunsen elude Elon Musk? It was having, yeah, it was having a burner phone. So those of you guys who have been keeping up with texts from Bunsen, you can't, uh, you can't, get fun, you can't find out who Bunsen is because he's got a burner phone. Of course, that's a pun on Bunsen being a Bernice Mountain Dog. Kelly, Nancy again, Carousel, Snake, and Mrs. Dunn. You actually thought that pun was pretty clever, Chris. I sure did. I loved it. (laughs) I just hope that the Elon Musk, you know, fans don't find out we're gently making fun of him because then, oh boy, will we have been a world of hurt. I wonder if there's like an algorithm now on Twitter that if you say Elon Musk in a space more than three times, he appears. Okay. Like Beetlejuice? Like Beetlejuice. (laughs) Okay. Here's the next question. At Tell Us Dark Matters, Jason spoke about social media and kindness, and we met this dog. Kuno the service Roddy, Doug the pug, Nacho, or Stephen Pawkings? <laughs> okay, which one? Oh, I caught some people with Stephen Pawkings. No, it was Kuno the service Roddy. Yeah, we met Kuno. It was very cool. Um... We were very distracted and Kuno and his mistress came around the corner and Bunsen took off to go see Kuno. And it wasn't the greatest greeting because we were were hoping that Bunsen would go up slowly, but he kind of ran up to Kuno. So we separated them and then uh, then we worked getting them together and then they were buddies by the end of it. So that was awesome. And um, Kuno's dog mom, such a nice lady. So, so inspirational. 
And uh, her talk was very, very well received as well. She was talking about accessibility and how Kuno is an ambassador for that. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Okay. Pet Chat November 19th. We have in third place, Carousel. In second place, we have Nancy again. And in first place, we have Kelly. Wow, Chris, you didn't get, you didn't win. (laughs) <laughs> so some folks in chat are wondering about um w- what i said the paw pack was and the paw pack is um <laughs> the not george carlin yeah the paw pack is the community that chris and i uh created with the help of the wonderful Hoseline who's here in the space today um it's called yeah it's called the paw pack and we are running um, seamlessly spaces from pop, the pop pack. And it's not just the ability to run an audio show. Um, I can, we can run live shows and there's so many amazing things on the, on the paid section. So it is a paid community, but we did, Chris and I did make a free part to it, um, in case Twitter creators, um, and, uh, you can sign up there. And when I have some time, everybody, I'll put the links into the chat and into the nest. I think Paul is actually helping out with a couple of the links there as well. So that's, that's the paw pack. And I made, I made the, this live, uh, live, the live on the paw pack free for everybody. So if you're on the free side or the pay side, you should be able to join, um, the what's going on right now that I'm broadcasting everywhere. Okay, on to stories of the week. Chris, do you want to start? Yes, absolutely, I will start. Okay. Um, So Ginger, we love Ginger. She is a cutie patootie kitty cat um, (laughs) who's very affectionate on her own terms. So she's not the cat that will jump in your lap and snuggle. Um, and even if you pick her up, she'll tolerate it for a moment and then she'll move away. Um, what she really likes to do is when you're folding socks or any kind of laundry, she likes to jump right into the basket. So, um, you can't do your chore anymore. Um, so maybe she's helping, but really she's not. Uh, so I made her her own basket with her own towel and she was like, mm, no, because I'm not in your way. I don't want to be in here. And so I was like, oh, Ginger. But last night I fell asleep on the couch. It was a long week, I tell you, um, especially with Thursday night getting home just after midnight and then working the uh, full day with high energy with my high school students. So by the end of the day, I was pretty tired and I woke up to Ginger sleeping on my lap and I was like, (laughs) oh, all I have to do is fall asleep and she'll come (laughs) and cuddle on my lap. And so uh, my stories this week are about Ginger because I know, Jason, you're going to talk about uh, the TELUS uh, Science Center. And I think I'll chime in with comments on that side of the story. Okay, perfect. I'm just putting the two links into chat for the paw pack and I'll throw them up in the nest. Um, I'm just going to check in with anybody in clubhouse. Nope. Nobody's on clubhouse right now. Uh, to the folks on wisdom that are listening. Hello. Thank you. And everybody right now on Twitter spaces. Thank you so much. We've got a really big space tonight, almost 50 people. Yeah. So this Thursday, um, our family, it wasn't just me cause I can't do this myself. There's no way I would have been able to do anything like do what, what we did on Thursday without your help, Chris. So I don't want to just say this was me. It was they asked us as a family to come up to the the tell us world of science. And while I put on the presentation and the talk, um, Chris, you and Adam and Adam's girlfriend, Annalise, came and were super helpful behind the scenes, um, letting people see Bunsen and Beaker and uh, talking about like getting I think you funneled people into the, the presentation. Um, I thought maybe like seven or eight people would listen to me speak because my uh, presentation was about how our account uses kindness and empathy to communicate science, but it was, it was packed. Like there was not, there's no where people could sit. Every, every seat was totally filled and there was people spilling out into the auditorium who were standing and having to listen. So it was, it was very heartwarming that, that so many people came to listen to the, the talk 
Um, and then there were folks from Edmonton and the surrounding area that follow us, Chris, and they came <clears throat> and they, and like before the show and after the show, there was like a, a more formal meet and greet where they came to talk to me and you. And, um, wow. Was it rewarding hearing what people had to say about how much they like what we do? And I know we get comments through our direct message that, you know, our account does, does stuff with science and it brightens people's day, but. If you were one of the people that came to talk to us after that, I, I, it, it was very emotional having people in real life come up to you and tell you that what what we work so hard at makes a difference. So that was that was super cool. Um, and then, of course, the stars of the show were really Bunsen and Beaker, not me and not you, Chris. It was Bunsen and Beaker. Yeah, people were so excited when they were coming in the door. <laughs> um, we had Bunsen and Beaker in the lobby, and they were all excited, and they were all wanting to come over. And this one uh, person came over and said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Can I give your dogs a treat? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> and um, she said, like, I specifically br brought treats uh, for your dogs, and I specifically came um, for them. Well, she probably came to the TELUS because it was a very cool event. Um, but yeah, she just loves what we do and she's a follower. Um, and she felt like uh, she, like when we first got Beaker, she watched Beaker grow up. Uh, and just that positive energy that everybody had. Um, and some some people were, were pretty emotional. Like they're saying, you, you pulled us through a very dark time and uh, we appreciate all that you do. Yeah, and that was, it was... It was awesome to hear that, but like I was, I, I didn't know what to say when people were saying that. Like, I'm just, just like so thankful people feel that we did that. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. I felt the same way. Yeah. And then, um, they were had some people, they must've been giving out, um, cardboard thumbs up, uh, handouts to people, uh, to say, Hey, if, like you can give somebody a compliment and give them a thumbs up. And so, um, a couple came up to us and said, here you go. You get a thumbs up for all the, the community that you're building and the message that you're sharing is awesome. Mm -hmm. So that was also really cool. Yeah. And you got, uh, someone came up to you and gave you a gift, Jason. I know, I know. And it was right before my, the presentation and the technology wasn't working. Um, yeah. And this person gave us a little goodie basket with treats for the dogs and really wonderful cards. So again, like, if if the if any of you I don't came were in the in the audience, um, it was very overwhelming because <laughs> there were so many people. And then we were doing meet and greets with Bunsen and Beaker. Just thank you for coming, um, uh, Brent. I see your request there. We'll take speaker requests in a second. Uh, and then and then with the meet and greets were so fun. We gave the dogs a break because they they're you know they shouldn't be working straight. So we went and gave them some quiet time and some water put their lab coat and their safety glasses on. And then they were, it was rock star time. They did so good. And what did you call, what did you call Bunsen? That was hilarious. I don't know. The Groot. Oh yeah. The Groot. Yeah. And why yeah, is, so, why is Bunsen the Groot? Yeah. So when we go to Comic Con and Jason is dressed up as the Groot, everybody comes running because you're over nine feet tall and you are the Groot of, <laughs> of the group. And it's just so cool. And everybody wants their picture with Groot and, Oh, there's Groot. And then they're like, Oh yeah, there's rocket. And Oh, star Lord. But those are our secondary ca characters in comparison to Groot. Um, so when we, when, when we have a cosplay group, the yeah. cosplay member that gets people to come running, we call them now the Groot. And in yeah, our man, so, yeah, in our Mandalorian team, who's the Groot, Chris? Uh, IG Eleven. Yeah, Adam dresses up as IG Eleven. Yeah, the IG Eleven man. People go bananas for IG Eleven. <laughs> yeah, and then when uh, we were the Loki variants, everybody loved like the old alligator Loki, which was you. Well, I was carrying a stuffed animal alligator with a little Loki crown, and that was that was more popular than all of our costumes put together. It, it was crazy. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and then when we were at the event, there were some people who actually didn't know who Bunsen and Beaker were. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what's going on? They were, what's going on? And then when you when you explain it to people, it's really it's really niche and 
like either you're, they get it or they don't. They're like dog science, communicating <laughs> science, cuteness and empathy. What? And then, um, and plus the music was booming. So I'm not sure that they heard everything that I said, uh, but it was still really cool to pass on our message. And we gave out some merch uh, and yep. people so really many stickers. appreciated that. Yeah. So many stickers and yeah. And uh, the big guy Bunsen, man, is he, he is so good with posing for people. Like just set him up and take a thousand pictures of the dude. He was just sitting there happy, letting people take his picture, put a hat on him. He'll wear a hat. (laughs) I had that magician's hat on him and people were like, he's a wizard. I'm like, no, he just wears random clothes because we've trained him really well. (laughs) Oh, what a nice, what a wonderful evening. Okay, so I've put into uh, the chat uh, links to the paw pack, and there is a there's a paid section which has all of the like a crazy amount of content, and then there's a link to the free section, and uh, we opened that up early because of how the reporting of Twitter maybe isn't the rosiest, and both Chris and I feel that Twitter's pro- like Twitter's not going to die, uh, but it may get a little buggy. But if it does flame out, it's always good to have a backup plan. And we have the Paw Pack Plus um, and the free section for everybody. And I know some folks are saying, hey, we should go. What about Mastodon? What about Truth Social, like other places? And I'm like, no, we'll wait and see um, because we we have the Paw Pack for everybody. Um, if Twitter does go away, maybe we'll look at Mastodon or something like that. But for right now, we're staying put. And we're focusing on um, the Paw Pack Twitter, and I've been pushing more content onto TikTok. So if you're wondering, that's what that's at. And, and a bunch of people followed us on Instagram, so thank you. Um, Chris, you might have to like reinstate your job of posting stuff on Instagram. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. Uh, the, un- the unfortunate thing is where I work, there's pretty much zero cell phone service, um, which makes it difficult to be on social media. Yeah. And maybe that was the, the plan. That is probably the plan. Yeah. They can throttle that stuff. Oh, I saw Donna for a second. Donna Craig is stuck in Peru. Um, I, she popped in and she's gone again. Maybe she rode off on an alpaca. I don't know. Um, Chris, do you have any more stories or should we open it up to the community? Um, well, we have some in our back pocket just in case, but uh, let's open it up to the community. Right. And um, uh, Hoseline is working with us on getting an exciting announcement ready. But there's uh, just so you know, it may not happen tonight. There's some technical snafus, I guess, because um, we want to make sure it's working right. But it, we'll see what we'll see what happens at the end there. So if you would like to come up and ask a question or share a pet story, now is the time to request the mic. You can do so on um, you can do so on Clubhouse. You can do so on Wisdom. Uh, I know I've only made Paula a moderator on um, the Paw Pack. So, Paula, you can ask, actually ask a question from uh, the Paw Pack if you want. So let's try let's try Paula talking from the Paw Pack right now and see how that works. So, Paula, you'll have to take yourself off mute on. Um, OK, Kate, can you guys hear Paula? Go ahead, Paula. Okay, I, I turned off Twitter because I was kind of getting a little feedback, so I turned off my Twitter so I wouldn't have any conflict. But I'm talking to you all from the Circle app, so it's really clear, and I'm so excited. I can't wait for this to – I'm just watching it grow and grow and grow. So welcome all the newbie members, and um, this will be sort of our little safe haven from Twitter going to pot. <laughs> so, but anyway, but um, my pet story – I don't really have a pet story, but – I've been kind of under the weather all all week. I had mm. uh, caught a cold and, and all that good stuff. So it's kind of been crazy, crazy week. So I, I really failed at the game tonight because I really haven't been paying attention too much to Twitter. Oh, that's okay. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, I do have some stuff to say. I, I um, If everybody wants an update on poor Olive, Olive is still with me, by the way. And she's got dementia and Mm. we, you know, but we're, we're doing it, you know, every day. And she went to the vet today and he was really kind of thrilled that we still are keeping her and she's comfortable and she still knows it's mom. Cause when my husband holds the dog, you know, holds Olive, she'll push him away. (laughs) (laughs) it's, It's like, 
okay, well, some days she's kind of sharp and then some days she's not so sharp, but she's doing, you know, really well. And I know people probably wondering why I kind of haven't posted a lot is because it is a demanding job as teen would probably tell anybody mm. when you have a, a dog that's senior and it's, it's a lot of work, but I just wanted to spread the love to everybody and say, you know, thanks for all the neat stories and everything that you share here, including you guys. I mean, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you and Chris. And I really say from the bottom of my heart, I love it. And, um, you know, happy Thanksgiving to all the American friends and, you know, we should be like Canadians and do it in October because it's way too much. <laughs> but anyway, and um, my question question to you guys from the TELUS uh, Center, did you ever find Kevin this round? <laughs> Chris, did we find Kevin? We did not find Kevin, <laughs> although someone came up and he wasn't wearing buttons, but I was like, mm, maybe that's Kevin. But Can you I imagine? Wasn't gonna, <laughs> I wasn't going to say, are you Kevin? Because that was so embarrassing like hello embarrassing moment but i should have i should have been like um you look like a kevin where is your <laughs> vest with buttons oh my goodness oh my gosh that is funny but that'll be the story you know of of always is the first one that you did in in search of kevin you know it's like it's like finding waldo where's kevin you know okay <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for letting me come up and and hope to see you all here on the Circle Community. Nice, thanks, Paula. I I wonder, Jason, if Calgary invites us again. We should uh, definitely. We should do a, like an APB for Kevin. Like, uh, yeah. Bunsen needs to wear a sign. Like, have you seen Kevin? Like, have yeah. him just sit there, and we can hold up signs. You know, like at the airport. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin, <laughs> though, the, the when went right before my presentation, every time I go someplace new, it's always like right to the last second to get my laptop hooked, laptop hooked up because it's like the person late at night that's usually there isn't really their main tech person. So like the main tech person is always there during the day. And like every time we've done one of these, it's like okay, all I need is a cable and then I need to turn on the projector and like the cable's missing or the projector remote is gone. So they they got a tech guy in and he came over and he had like 100,000 pins all over his jacket. I was like, oh my goodness, maybe it's Kevin. No, but his name was uh, Bill or something. So struck out. But shout out to Bill for getting you um, able to be presenting i know they gave me a little headset like i felt like an infomercial guy did you see the cool headset i was wearing yeah you look like slap chop <laughs> no i felt i felt kind of like an infomercial when i put that thing on i was like oh no i'm gonna be selling um what are those you're selling science those absorbent towels empathy and cute. that's right i do i i i am a marketer of some kind that's true that's true you you do Okay, we'll go to Donna and then Brent and then Snickerdoodle. Because Donna, I don't know if your connection's good. Are you are you in Peru right now? I am. Hola, buenos noches. <laughs> I am stuck here for a while. Oh. Um, I was supposed to be flying home tomorrow, uh, but there was a crash, a plane crash at the Lima airport. And unfortunately, there's only one runway. Uh, so the airport's been closed for two days. It'll probably be closed tomorrow. The soonest they can get me out is Friday. So I will be this spending cut, like next Friday, next Friday. Yeah, wow. Next Friday. Wow. So I will, I, I'm like pretty soon. I'm like, Hey, they're going to tax me if I'm in this country more than 30 days. So y'all need to get me out of here. Um, anyways, um, I sent you pictures personally, cause I finally saw a baby alpaca and I got to hold an even smaller one and all the llamas at Machu Picchu are bananas. So I hope, <laughs> I hope if anybody ever gets the chance to go or those who have been on this call go, it is breathtaking. Um, my only suggestion is, is even though I had mosquito repellent on, I've probably been bitten by a thousand mosquitoes and I look like I have the chicken pox right now. Um, mm. So I, I'm a little miserable, uh, but at least the food's good and the people are super kind. Um, my stepdad said Callie is flipping him off every time he goes in the room to check on her. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be a rough visit when I get home, but <laughs> I've missed y'all. And uh, I got the reminder and I have Wi-Fi, so I'm 
popping on to say hi. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And uh, wish I was there to have turkey. They're trying to feed me a stuffed guinea pig down here and I won't eat it. Oh. So I have um, instantaneously become a vegetarian. So the alpaca I was holding, they said, oh, she'll be steaks tomorrow. I'm like, no, she won't. I'm saving her. So um, get down here if you haven't. Enjoy the country. It's beautiful. And I've missed y'all. So I've, I had to keep up with what y'all were doing at different hours of the night. So good job at TELUS. And I'm glad y'all got to meet Kuno. Mm-hmm. What's the time? Like, uh, are you one or two hours ahead of us? Like, you're in Central uh, America. You, I'm two hours. Two I'm hours. actually in, like, New York time. Even York though time. I'm lined yep. up I'm lined up directly with you guys the way South America goes. Yes. I'm on the far west coast, but they don't do time changes. Oh, okay. So it's currently 830 here. Right. New York time, but, like, uh, not longitude. Latitude, you're the same. 100 percent. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's cool. You get to see, as a science person, I'm sure you would be freaking out because of all the living species that are in the Amazon rainforest here. Um, you see everything, bears, foxes. But those llamas, man, they could give two you know what's about you on their property it's they're everywhere <laughs> so it was pretty awesome so uh, i know i've been dreaming about this a long time and i sent y'all the pictures but uh yeah thanks for letting me chat about it i'm i'm on cloud nine best birthday trip ever uh, so two questions donna um sure um, the first one is a colleague of mine who loves to travel she went to machu picchu and climbed up and she, you know, she's in fairly good shape. And she, mm-hmm. she said it destroyed her. Like it was so yep. hard because of the, 100%. because of the elevation, like the low oxygen. Did, did you have trouble too? Yeah. So, uh, I didn't do my research well enough. I knew about all the steps. So I cheated a little bit. Um, I went to Lima for three days first, which sea level, you're right on the ocean, but then I came up to Cusco. So I had to take a plane to Cusco and Cusco is at 12,100 feet. Okay. Yeah. So what is that? Almost 3000 meters for you guys or 2,600 meters. So I was not acclimated to that kind of altitude. Machu Picchu actually felt pretty good at because it was lower than Cusco. So I went down 3000 feet. I was down Machu Picchu is like at 9000 feet. Okay. So I did. uh, I'm very thankful. I know Kathy mentioned that she would stay at the hotel I was at, but they offered free oxygen at any time. And I called the front desk I, I, probably a thousand times. They're like, hola, Miss Craig. So here comes the oxygen. Um, I I felt it the next day I was down for the count. So if you look at all my pictures on social media, all you saw was food on the day after Machu Picchu because I was I couldn't do anything. Oh, no. um, it wiped me out. It, it, and so your friend is correct in that. Yeah. And what's the second question? Um, well, the second question was, uh, Chris and I have looked somewhat seriously about getting alpacas and I think it's just, they're kind of adorable. Oh, oh my God. I, I, I literally cried. So my hotel actually has one called Ponchita. So she's out there in the mornings and, uh, she was so calm. She was only eight months old and she had to be bottle fed and at a year old, she can go to hay. Uh, but then, uh, the last night in the hotel before I was supposed to fly, uh, that I thought I was going to get to Lima until the plane crashed. I'm still stuck up in Cusco at this altitude, but I'm acclimated now. So I'm okay. Uh, but they had little, they had two baby alpacas that were littler than her that were like two months old. Hmm. So I am with you guys. Um, I'll help take care of them. I'll come up once a month. I'll make a trip. I love them. They are the softest things ever. And llamas will spit, but the alpaca did not spit. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I've been, I've been spit at and spit on by llamas. They're they're kind of common in Alberta. They, they're guard animals for cattle and for sheep because they'll uh, scare off coyotes. 
Oh yeah. Well, they they can be. I, I was sitting on um, like a stone wall crying, uh, and I'm I, that's like probably TMI, but I was emotional because, as you know, my mom died like yours. Mm. I'm I'm sitting looking at one of the seventh wonders on the world that will not allow tourists starting next year. So I'm sitting there, and I had four llamas walk right up to me, and one had its face right at me and was looking at me. I'm like, don't you do it, don't you do it, and it didn't, and and then. And so I said in Spanish, uh, can I have a beso, a kiss, just in case they speak Spanish? And it kissed my face. <laughs> oh. So I literally want an alpaca farm after being here. I will learn how to make sweaters. I don't know how to knit, uh, but I'm all in. I will help. You just have to get them sheared, and then uh, people will pay for the, the wool, actually. That's what we read. Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, obviously they need that wool while y'all are freezing. Um, and FYI, I'm glad I'm here. It snowed in Dallas today, so uh, glad I'm here. Uh, but I'm ready to come home. But thank you for letting me take up a lot of time and and yak. But I I'm with you. Support you with the llamas. I'm in. Got lots of love in the chat and lots of uh, fun comments. In um, we got some fun comments in the in the in the chat as well about your story. Awesome, Donna. Okay, so I think we'll go to Brent and then Snickerdoodle and then uh, Tracy. Brent, hi. Good to see you in our space. Well, I have a dog story to share, but it's not because I own a dog. It's because my friend has a dog. Okay. And I, I've been afraid, afraid of dogs forever since... Since I've been uh, born, I've been afraid of dogs. And since my friend got a dog, I uh, uh, grew out of my fear of dogs. And what kind of dog did your friend, does your friend have? Hmm. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a golden retriever. Aw. <laughs> okay. And, uh, Brent, was it like, did it, was it super friendly to you? Did you, did it, how did it help you get over your fear of, fear of dogs? Hmm. It was just a, uh, super, uh, a super friendly experience of meeting it for the first time. Oh, very cool. Well, go and retreat. Awesome. Brent, what's the name of the dog? The dog's name is Charlie. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Charlie. I love that. Yeah. What's Jackie's dog's name? Murphy. Murphy. My colleague, uh, the one that's the traveler, she has a golden retriever named Murphy. So it's like Murphy and Charlie. So now because of that, I no longer have a fear of dogs. That's that's great. You know, Brent, if we ever see you in real life, uh, we'll make sure Beaker's the first dog you see because Bunsen's really big and sometimes he's just so big it can be intimidating. But Beaker is a little happy thing. So <laughs> we'll make sure Beaker's the first one. Um, oh, and that reminds me, Chris, I got approval to bring Beaker into my school. Uh, yeah, I think you told me that already. Yeah, so I can bring Beaker in um, to my school. And, uh, I have this, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep the idea secret. I'm going to keep the idea secret. I maybe have mentioned it, but I've got something cooking with bringing beaker into the school. Are you the rock? Smell what the rock's been cooking? Yes. That's, uh, that's where I was going with that. Did you know the rock used to play in the Canadian football league? The CFL. Yeah, he did. He played in the CFL. <laughs> That's amazing. And then he's like, boy, I can make more money wrestling. And he was right. And now he saves us from natural disasters and other things. And like that, how does it wasn't he in the movie where the, the dam broke, like there was a big dam and it broke. And then he just like flexed his muscles at it and it's fixed the dam or something. I forget. I wasn't really paying mm -hmm. attention to the plot of that movie. no. Let's go to our next speaker here. Okay, who's that, Chris? I believe it's either Tracy or Snickerdoodle. I think it's Snickerdoodle and then Tracy. Okay. Hi, Snickerdoodle. Hello. Um, I have a question actually about the, the podcast. Um, I was going through the, the newsletter 
And I can't find the link to the uh, free thing. No, I'm I'm not technically uh, astute, so maybe I'm missing it. Oh, it's okay. the 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 latest new newsletter that I sent out, it's the second link. Um, and it is, uh, is it up in the chat? Yes. So, I put the link into the na- into the nest. Um, there's the Kahoot, there's the paid section link. And then here is the link to sign up for the free side to the pop pack circle. Um, so that link is there as well. I can, you know what? I can DM you that link. Is, is that cool? Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So I will do that after the space. You, you do have okay. to set, you do have to set up an account on circle, but you really, you don't need to give any personal information beyond, I think your email address, a username and a password. Um, and I think the, the email address is something that Chris and I maybe can see, but your password and your username is encrypted by circle. So some people were wondering about security there. I don't even know if you need your email address, to be honest with you. I don't think you do. Um, I see some 100s. Yeah, you don't need your email address, just a password and a username. Um, and then you're in. And then there's a there's like four or five places that are the that the the free section has access to. Do you have any questions oh. beyond that snickerdoodle? Like, do you want me, me to explain anything about the paw pack? Uh, no, no, the, the your uh, newsletter explained it really well. But I just couldn't seem to find the link for the for the free circle thing. So yeah. no, that's, that's great. Yeah. No, if you can DM me the, the details later, that would be great. Perfect. Yep. And then um, like at any time uh, we have it so that if you click on like one of the paid sections and you're like, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'd like to sign up, then it takes you right to a place you can sign up, but there's no obligation. So yeah. Yeah. I, unfortunately I don't use credit cards because credit cards and I don't get along. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. Well, we do actually, we get along very, very well. Oh, but, um, <laughs> yeah. So my own protection, I don't use credit cards, so I have to go to the, the free one, unfortunately, but no, that, that, uh, clarifies things. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll go to Tracy. Hi. Hi, Tracy. How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. Good, good. Um, to kind of build off that, because now I'm a little confused. Um, can you use a debit card to pay for the paw pack? Um, I think it's connected through something called, we've hooked it up through something called Stripe. Um, and yeah. Stripe allows currently only credit cards. So okay. in the I don't remember if I was using a credit card or a debit to pay yeah, for it. Yeah, in the future, I think we're hoping to get other forms of payment. But for right now, like all of this is happening really fast. So <laughs> um, yeah, I it, might be using my debit card right now and just you, forgot which one I'm using. To yeah, like I, if your debit card has a credit card function, you might be able to use that. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure there. Okay. Um, so uh, just my... Weekly Ricky update. Uh, he's doing really well still. He like um, still slowly switching him to wet food. Uh, so just I started it at night. I've just been like trying to incorporate it into the morning sometimes, and then I'll be like giving it to him morning and night for his food. But I like feel weird about just like not having any kibble in there. I'm like, is he gonna be starving all day? <laughs> like he's probably he'll probably be fine, but it's just like me stressing about him like oh. being hungry, even though he's like fifteen pounds, he'll live off his body fat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, but he's he's been doing good. He hasn't really like he'll get a little a little bitey sometimes, but nothing <laughs> like he was doing. Oh. Um and so and he was my cat alarm clock this morning. He did like when my alarm, I just have my phone on vibrate because I'll, I'll still, it'll still wake me up. Um, but when that happened, he was like right there getting his meows in. So I think he knows like when my alarm goes off, he like immediately wants attention, but I just want to like snooze, you know, <laughs> like everyone, like one to the snooze button. <laughs> so you'll, uh, you'll but have he's, to, he's still doing good though. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off, Tracy. I'm so sorry. I just said he's still doing good. So, 
I wrote a science thread about cats. Um, it'll be one of our threads this week. And then I've been turning the threads into TikTok videos. So uh, you'll have to be on the lookout for that, Tracy. I think I think I have it scheduled for Tuesday, the cat thread. No, maybe Monday. I forget, actually. Monday or Tuesday. But I'm going to keep it a surprise what it's about. Good science, though. And happy Catter Day to you, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Catter Day to Ginger. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Michael, it's your first time in our space. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, Bunsen. Thank you so very much for allowing me to come in such a precious, wonderful, loving, caring pet room. Aw. And I, you know, um, I have to say, when I was listening to my friend Brent, it brought back some good memories and mixed memories. I want you to know when I was a young lad, Brent, and anybody else that it might apply to, I got bit by a dog a couple of times. Mm. The dog's name was Rusty. It was a little tiny dog. And I remember as a little single digit boy (laughs) riding my bicycle by his house. And I'm very good friends even to this day to the previous owner of the dog that's in doggy heaven. But Kenny and I were very good friends. He's a little older than I am when we were children. And the dog, Rusty, for whatever reason, whenever you went by him on a bicycle or anything else, if it had wheels, you were going to be chased. And I didn't know that. So my first experience, even though I love animals, dogs especially, and horses, um, I was surprised that the dog bit me and didn't know why. And that gave me a fear of animals for a little bit. I don't blame you, Michael. Yeah, but I want to tell you how I overcame all of that. I'm not leaving it as a negative story, that's for sure. I want you to know that as I got older in life, I learned that different dogs have different kinds of personalities and it depends upon the owner on how they train that particular dog. So even though Rusty bit me twice and went to the hospital for my shot twice <laughs> when I was probably about seven years old, I'm 62 now, so it's just like yesterday, <laughs> I still can envision the bite. But it still, as a young man, left an impression of pain. Mm-hmm. When I got older in high school, I ended up with several dogs of my own, predominantly German shepherds. And I trained a lot of the dogs on my own. I had no skill set. I just guessed on my own. I'm not a professional. And one of my dogs bit one of my friends in the middle area of a man's body that you don't bite. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, yes. And had to have a stitch or two at the emergency room. But I only say this to people who are listening like Brent. Not all doggies are bad. Even the dog that bit the person that was my friend was a nice dog. They just have different personality traits. And they respond and react to different things. I only learned this as I got older. I absolutely love dogs. Please forgive me. I don't like cats because I'm allergic to them. Please forgive me for that statement, but I had to be honest with you. (laughs) I don't want to lie. I do love horses and dogs, and I love watching dog shows and things like that. So I would try and encourage people who may have had a bit of fear in the beginning when they were younger, but to try to overcome it by not allowing what the past bad examples that may have happened to you and did occur to affect you from loving these lovable dogs. 
I could almost bet, even though I don't know Bunsen and Burner, I bet you they're the friendliest dogs you would ever be around, especially with the master around. That would be the owner. So I'm just trying to say, if you've ever got injured by an animal, please don't let it throw you from loving animals. Animals, I have found, can be very caring, very affectionate, and very loving. Not the same way, obviously, of a love of a human being. I'm, I'm not talking any kind of perversion. I'm just saying that sometimes you have to give yourself maybe a second or even a third break at it and say, you know what? What happened to my friends or what happened to me, I'm just going to let it go. And with permission, if there's a dog there with an owner, I'm going to ask the owner, number one, if the dog is friendly and if I can have permission to pet the dog. It's never a good idea, in my opinion, without permission, unless you know the owner very well and you're going to the store together, to just walk over to some strange dog <laughs> and some strange owner and think it's okay to pet them. Yes. Because the dog could be trained to protect that person and you could get attacked, meaning snipped at or barked at, because the dog is only trying to protect its human family as well as its other doggy friends that may be around. So that's just a suggestion that I thought I might put out there. But I love this space, and I want to thank you personally, Bunsen, for allowing me to come up. I've been cooped up. I just got out of the hospital. I had a brain seizure. Oh, no. Oh, and they did an x-ray, and they couldn't find anything else, so the neurologist allowed me to go home. Um, I guess according to my mother when I was home, she found me in my bedroom on my floor uh, having a convulsion. And I was out cold and didn't know what I was doing and flaring my arms and feet, the EMTs. Mm -hmm. My mother told me I gave them a hard time. They gave me a drug. I was literally out for eight uh, six hours in the ER, according to the doctors. Wow. So I had no idea. But I do know one thing. I believe a comfort animal like a doggy would have done me just fine. So I am now considering getting a dog. Uh, but I have to go because I live in Florida. We have what's called HOA rules there it's a homeowner association rules and i have to see if there's an exception now there's a difference as most people know between a service animal and an emotional dog mm -hmm. and i need to ask my doctor what he would prefer so when i heard this space as i was going through everything tonight it was so bunsen you had this on at the perfect time at least for me it was gentle it's loving it's caring there are people in the audience that love the animals they love what you do they love what the people are saying and so i think it's just wonderful what you're doing well thank you so, well, much, thank michael. You so much michael and, and i thank you we're just having a we're little, bit, having of, a little uh, bit of uh uh, Michael, could there's a little bit of a loop back on your uh, on your end. If you could just mute yourself for a second, thank you. Whenever I talk, it was coming back through you. Thanks. Um, thank you for the kind words, Michael, um, and great advice as well. And uh, and and yeah, we're we're glad that you're okay. And thank you for coming to our space. Really appreciate yes. it. Thank you, Michael. You brought up so many excellent points uh, about. Um, being bit by a dog or having uh, a, an aversion to dogs um, and just overcoming um, in a, in a safe way. So we really appreciate that. And I'm glad um, that you're back home and that your uh, neurologist gave you the okay to get, to get back home. And then hopefully um, with follow-up, you'll, you'll find out what happened. Uh, sorry, that's Bunsen. <laughs> he likes to bark uh, when I talk. Thanks, Michael. And uh, my, Thank you both. You betcha. My name is Jason, but I definitely, I definitely answer to Bunsen. So, <laughs> okay, we'll go. Thank to you, Jason. I didn't know your name. Oh, Thank it's you okay. for telling me. No, it's all good. It's okay. We'll go to Sarah and then Dustin. Sarah, hi. How are you doing tonight? Hi. Hello, Jason. Hello, Chris. Um, I'm well. Thank you. Um, I, I have a funny little 
story for you. Um, I've been listening to the science podcast. I listen to it for no, you know, for not only for the science, but just so that I can try to win the Cahoots game. It's my <laughs> goal in life now. Um, I got twenty first place, so I'm coming up. You're improving. I'm up. I'm, I'm improving. I'm impro- the moose one got me. Come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I picked four. I knew it was wrong, but I picked four. Um, so I was listening to your latest science podcast about you had the. Um, was she a doctor? I think she was a doctor. Um, Dr. Shelley Volsh. Shelley Volsh. Yes, Dr. Yeah. Shelley Volsh. And she was talking about dogs laughing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was it was compelling. I had to rewind a couple of times so that I could you know listen and um, and re listen. But she you know did this research and dogs do in fact laugh, and I knew that. I didn't need research. I had my copper bear and he thought I was hysterical. (laughs) And so when my husband gets home, he had taken his car to get washed. He comes in the door. And the second he walks in the door, I was standing in the kitchen listening. And I, I walk, you know, into the living room and greeted him with, I told you that copper bear could laugh. And he looked at me. And he could hear the podcast going on in the background. <laughs> and he stopped and he said, are you listening to that science podcast again? And I said, yes. And this time it's about, la- you know, dogs laughing and Copper Bear laughed. He thought I was hysterical. And he, he shook his head and he said, he muttered, that podcast is going to ruin our marriage. <laughs> and I I laughed so hard. And I thought... and. I, I didn't miss a beat. Our dogs always greet when we come in the door and they were jumping up on him and, you know, he was greeting them. And I said, you realize they're laughing at you. Right. (laughs) And I have the science to prove it. (laughs) And so basically my story is yes, dogs do laugh. My dog thought I was hysterical and um, the science podcast will be ruining my marriage. I'll need you both to testify on my behalf. (laughs) At divorce court, <laughs> that it is his fault while my dogs sit in the galley and laugh. <laughs> that uh, you're going to teach them to point and laugh. <laughs> Dr. Shelley Volsh, uh, like we had her on a side chat live on Tuesday about a month and a half ago, but the podcast interview you're listening to is like three or four months ago. I interviewed her and it was like so profound um, because they had just finished that research. So it wasn't like in her, like in all of the, ba- I do background on my guests before I, I ask them questions and none of that was in her background. So she blindsided me and I was like, Oh my good. What? I just blindsided you, you with the laughter. Because yeah. The, the her whole, whole study about the dogs laughing like um that, that was what they were working on, but they weren't done it. So it hadn't been like published anywhere. So, um, it was, yeah, it was a fantastic, mind-blowing interview. It was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. And just a little side uh, note, you had mentioned a place where you have gone in the summertime, I believe, Sandpoint. Sandpoint, and, Idaho, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I grew up right near there in a little town called St. Mary's. I know St. Mary's. We've been through there. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah, I um, grew up there my whole life, and um, we still go back. We have property, and um, love, love, love it. Idaho is beautiful, um, and you can get totally great beautiful. potatoes there. <laughs> well, we go for the <laughs> landscape, but the potatoes are secondary for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Idaho is very similar to, for us, uh, like parts of British Columbia. Like, it's just like an extension of British Columbia for us. Um, yeah. Yeah, so if you're ever in the area, we'll meet you in Sandpoint. We'll take a little trip on the lake in the boat. Bring the dogs. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's my family. Chris, you, 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 we had a big family, like with my, my parents years ago, we went to Sandpoint and that was, I think your first time there. Yeah. And that was, it was very, very amazing uh, to be able to go. And then they have that cute, um, kind of shopping area that you can see all sorts of amazing um, homemade things. We really like going there. And I think they had ice cream for you. 
They had tiger ice cream. Yes. Yes. And you love that. Tiger ice cream is the best Your flavor. Favorite. Yeah, it's the best. Well, flavor. the good the good thing about those small towns in, in northern Idaho, they don't follow any guidelines. You know, they don't. Um, you can bring your dogs into any store <laughs> as long as they're on a leash. Restaurants, bars, grocery stores, clothing stores. You can bring your dogs anywhere, which is why we still vacation there. Yeah, that lake is very it's it's a pretty nice lake and um, a lot warmer than the lakes that I swim in in Alberta. Let's just say that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sarah. OK, over to Dustin and then Sean. Dustin, hello. Welcome to the space. We'll give Dustin a second. You just have to unmute yourself, Dustin. We are not hearing you right now. Ooh, maybe it's spaces shenanigans. I don't know. Dustin, we'll come back to you. It's all good. You can keep your spot there. Uh, Sean, go ahead. Do you have a story or question? Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for the time. This is my first time ever using uh, Twitter spaces, talking as a speaker, so I appreciate it. Um, and I actually just wanted to say thank you because I won the gift card, uh, for Bark and Beyond a couple weeks ago. So that was really nice. And, um, yeah, it was a really great surprise and I was so excited. Oh, and, awesome. um, yeah, thank you so much. And I really enjoy this space and hearing everyone's stories about their pets. And right now, um, going through a situation with my best friend's dog, who's basically like my dog. I'm over there every day and she's a 10 year old, um, rescue and she's getting, she's showing her age and it's just a matter of like, she's, um, kind of like a collie mixed with a sheep dog and we love her so much. And it's just been tough the lot. Every time I take her out on a walk and She's kind of struggling with a bit of a limp and just some other issues. So I don't know. I just didn't know if anyone had any advice for this stage in a, you know, a dog's life and how you just handle it. And I don't know. I feel so bad for my best friend because they've, you know, been together since she was a puppy and now she's she's just getting older and the mm -hmm. age is showing and yeah, it's just, if I could ask for some well wishes and just put that out there that, you know, we love you pepper and just thanks for the time. Well, Sean, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that your, uh, your dog is um, having maybe some elderly issues. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I, we're thinking about you for sure. Uh, when, a, when a dog gets very, very old, they're just like any other human that gets very, very old, you know, things get creaky, th things get tougher to move around. The, the advice that I've been given by vets and other people, um, is just, is your dog still happy regardless of having creaky bones and moving around slowly? And if the dog is still happy and eating and part of your life, it's no different than a human that's quite elderly and creaky and has trouble moving around. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. That's another, that's actually a uh, side issue though with her. It seems she's getting hungrier. Like she's, she's going out on walks and every time I take her out on a walk, she'll have a little bit of a limp. Like if she takes the wrong step in her mm -hmm. front left leg. But then when we get back into the house, she's right. All she could think about is the treat cabinet and just starts barking for treats like she's getting bossy with their older age so <laughs> that sounds like a lot of senior citizens i know though <laughs> yeah yeah she's she's getting bossy and wants nothing but treats and just she's happy but just showing her age and yep. just thank you thank you so much for the words and i'll let the next speaker go thank you you betcha sean um and if any of our uh people in the community wants to come up to give sean some advice uh our, our golden we had before Bunsen didn't reach that point where they had arthritis, arthritis or, um, you know, had really old age problems. She got cancer, uh, unfortunately, when she was, when did Callan get cancer? When she was nine, Chris? Well, she was eight. Eight, yeah. So we lost her a little early. Um, 
And uh, so the only advice I can give to you is what I'm talking to, to different. So we've got some people coming up that might be able to give you some advice, Sean. So we'll bring those people up. But I just to, uh, to respect Dustin, Dustin, you, you can go. Uh, I see you're off off mute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, I didn't realize I was on mute earlier. I'm a Malawa dad. Oh, I'm all you, cute. You, yep. You can probably see that in the picture there for mm-hmm. my profile. Yep. Um, and I just, the only, the only reason that I wanted to jump in here and talk about something was I heard Michael talking earlier and uh, he was talking about a brain x-ray. So x-ray is my field of expertise and, uh, he needs to talk to those people because there's no such thing as a brain x-ray. Mm. I throw it out there. Um, oh, excuse me, but I never said a brain x-ray. I said I had a brain seizure and they did it in a um, uh, thing on my head where they put like a face mask on you too. And they gave me two milligrams of Ativan and it was a 45 minute test and the, the neurologist wrote up the report. That's what I said. I that never said, said it the way you said it. Okay, perfect. So maybe it was just a miscommunication. Some kind of scan, perhaps. Yeah, probably. Sounds like MRI for five minutes, probably. There you go. Yeah. MRI. No, 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 no. It was an MRI, but it's a 45-minute brain scan. Okay, you sweet. You go to any hospital, talk to any neurologist... I'm not going to tell you my other part of my medical condition. It's nobody's business. But they will tell you that they they will tell you that they do have tests, and it lasts 45 minutes, not five minutes, not ten minutes. Yeah, which leads me to believe is an MRI, which is that's fine. I mean that that's what that is. Yeah. But anyways. Well, that's good. We got that cleared up. Uh, Dustin, did you yeah. have a question or a uh, dog story? Uh, no, the, the, the uh, thing that caught my attention was the uh, x-ray thing. That's what I do. Um, but no, Mally dad. Um, no, no, I, I don't have anything. Bad <laughs> that. It was just, the, it was the medical side of things. That Perfect. Kind of wanted to jump in. Yeah, so. well, I think Michael cleared cleared it up that it wasn't. Maybe it was just the the audio kind of goes in and out. So I mean, yeah, that's that's great. You were sure, here to offer sure. your expertise. If it was perhaps yeah. the wrong thing, but it sounds like Michael was on the ball, and Michael knows what's going on there. So awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks you. For, thanks for coming yeah. to the space and and being on the lookout for our fe- fellow community members. And Michael, thanks for clearing up that too. Okay, so we'll go to. I brought up some more people there. We'll go to. Uh, Bianca and then Kathy. So Bianca, go ahead. Oh, there's a Bianca and there's a Blanca. So I just want to make sure who it is. Oh, Blanca. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking at my phone from a weird angle. It's Blanca. It's you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, I was. I just wanted to say that um, uh, for the speaker that spoke uh, about his friend's dog, um, that now uh, is getting old. Uh, one of the things I would recommend is the physical therapy. Um, it the hydrojet really helped Socrates in his last two years. It made such an amazing difference in him in his walking because his hips were now um, a little weak. He was very muscular throughout his whole life, um, but he did lose a lot of the muscle in, in the last two years. And we immediately noticed the difference the first time he went for physical therapy. And getting on that hydro jet machine was really the best thing ever. So if um especially for the arthritis, if um the dog is having those kind of issues. It's an amazing treatment for them, and I highly, highly recommend it. That's a great piece of advice, Blanca. Thank you so much. Thank sure. you. Um, actually, yeah. So when I was teaching from home for two years, I had a student um, whose family owns a um, – I was well, it's Lacey and Foxy's Playground. It's a, a dog 
uh, daycare and they actually have one of those machines and uh, he would uh, on the Google Meet be in the room with the dog uh, <laughs> walking in that hydro machine. So um, I actually knew about that, but we haven't accessed it for our dogs, but that's a great piece of advice. Thank you. I love that, Blanca. Thank you. And uh, hopefully you heard that, Sean. There's a little bit of advice there. Um, before we get to the next speakers, I, uh, we, I've been in communicating in the background with our sponsor and I want to give them a shout out. Uh, we were a little bit slow at the start and me, that's my fault and I apologize. Um, Pet Chat is sponsored by BarkandBeyondSupply.com. Bark and Beyond is a small family owned company that started off making joint supplements, but quickly branched out into toys and treats and in boxes. And if you look in the nest, they have this cute Thanksgiving turkey dog wag box. And that will be the prize today for somebody in the show or somebody who's um, in the space. And that goes for folks that are on Clubhouse and folks that are on Wisdom. Somebody from Clubhouse won the other day. So I'd just like to give them a shout out and uh, we'll put some more stuff of theirs up in the nest. But the prize today is that turkey um, Thanksgiving turkey dog wag box. And we are so thankful to be partnered with Bark and Beyond dot com. Right. And Jason, did you see their tweet this week where they had uh, some trouble with their well? Um, no, sorry, way- I didn't. I don't know anything about that. I apologize. One way to support uh, to support them is to purchase uh, some items so that they're able to because it's right before Christmas um, and just being like we all buy things for our pets. So mm-hmm. um, instead of going to a big box store, um, just support support them. That's a great that's a great point. I must have missed that. And I apologize. Uh, I we get v- many, many notifications. Um, so I'll take a look at that post. Okay. I see your hand up Seton, but Kathy L was just ahead of you. So if you could be patient just a little bit, we'll go to Kathy and then we'll go to Seton. Kathy. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I wanted to also address Sean and his comments about his friend's dog. Um, the elderly dog, uh, we kind of just went through that last year with our dog and we ended up sadly losing her in January of this year. But I do have a good story about this. Um, she forever was not a a good eater. She never really liked the food and no matter what we fed her. And in her last year, what gave us the extra year was being flexible about her diet and changing, uh, consulting with our veterinarians and changing her diet a couple times. And we finally found something that she actually loved and, and enjoyed. And, um, my point is, is Sean, you might want to c- take the dog to the vet, consult with the vet about different diets and try different things and also try, um, feeding her or him, uh, more often during, throughout the day than you do now instead of like twice a day because they're elderly, they're, they're, their needs change and you might want to try more like three or four times a day. I had to do that with our dog, but it paid off because it gave us an extra year with her and hmm. it was the best thing. You know, it was when it came her time to go and I'm going to fall apart here. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's, 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 so. it's a very sad, very sad time. It is totally okay. Yeah. It's, it just, I knew, we knew that it was coming, but it was okay because we had that extra time with her. We knew that we did everything we could Mm -hmm. to help her. And, um, but that, that last year was the best because she was eating and she was happy and her quality of life. And Jason, you really hit it on the nail. You have to read your dog for their quality of life, how much they're responding back to you Mm -hmm. and how much joy they seem to be getting out of each day. Um, or, you know, just generally their, their happiness level and, and you'll see it, you'll see the difference. Um, Mm -hmm. but just be flexible and be patient and be supportive. And, you know, I got down on my floor, you know, several times we were changing diets with her and I was feeding her by hand (laughs) so that she would eat. And we, before we finally found the food that she liked, but it's diet and it's exercise. It's the whole picture. It's Blanca also said the physical therapy. That's really important. Um, it's just like having a child or an elderly person, their needs change and you just have to roll with it and be flexible. And I send you all the hope in the world for another good year or two with her or three or four. So, yeah. Kathy, thank you so much. 
You're welcome. Okay, we'll go to uh, Seton Haig at Dog O N G E. Seton, hello. Thank you for waiting patiently. Well, hello. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. You bet. Great. Uh, well, I, uh, you know, you're, uh, yeah. you're giving me a lot of uh, pleasure uh, thinking about. I had a dog. Uh, he died uh, quite a while ago. Uh, he, uh, it was a, a purebred German shepherd that they got when I was four, a beautiful female, and she was tan-colored and had a tree in the middle of her forehead. And uh, three times she saved me from cattle that were going to gore me. Oh, no. Yeah, three times she came out of nowhere. I, like a fool, I was crossing the field where I shouldn't be. A, a <laughs> you know, a young a young lad would <laughs> tend to do that and walk around, you know, and uh, yep. I, I had. I, yeah, right. But in the winter time, uh, anybody else out in the farm in bare feet and, and cold, you ever step from one cow pie to another and felt it squish between your toes? Anybody else experienced that? Hey? Anybody else do that when they were a youngster? Hey? My sister was older. I thought it was normal to, to hop from one cow pie, but nobody else did that. But anyway, <laughs> that. My, my my dog guy uh, she, she <laughs> saved me three times. And I, I always told her if she was human, I would have married her. Eh? But she was beautiful, it's a beautiful dog. And I uh, I had another one, another red red dog that uh, apart. Uh, I that was a, a little guy, and but it would scare, it would bark and scare the bears away. It would stand there looking out the side of its eye at the bear and just bark and irritate the hell out of them. <laughs> and it, it, it was it was a performance that he went through. It was it was gorgeous, and then there was another one I had a a, a hump. He was called Hump. He was half bloodhound and half husky with the curling tail and the drooping skin and the big uh, bloodhound eyes. Uh, and the last time I saw him, he was well. He ran off. He was running the last time I saw him. I never found him again. He ran oh. off. Uh, hey, but thank you for uh, reminding me. Uh, oh, uh, Chris, uh, what you were talking about some uh, 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 some uh, a physical problem with uh, a dog? Was it the bowels or his balls you were talking about? I didn't quite catch that. Oh, I wasn't talking about that. Somebody had said that a dog bit um, their friend in an area that. Um, wouldn't be, wouldn't be pleasant for, I what was that, was that the bowels or the balls? I didn't quite catch the, the uh, yeah, I think, I think he was alluding that his friend got nipped in the testicular area. But okay. we aren't, we aren't quite sure. We just left that to, we left uh, it to everybody's imagination. Imagination. Right. <laughs> what was there amputation involved? Or, no. Or was it okay? Yeah. The, the uh, friend was okay. They said stitches, but uh, yeah, we, we weren't quite sure. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Hey, I was on that stables the other day and I just happened to say, look at the horse. Look at the horse. Hey, thank you. Okay, thanks, Seton. <laughs> All right. Some great storytelling there. Um, we brought Bark and Beyond up. You, your go. Go ahead, Bark and Beyond. Hey there. How's everybody? Hi, it's so good to hear your voice. It's our awesome sponsor, Bark and Beyond. <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to tell um, Chris, thank you for mentioning our we um it's been a crazy year for us on a personal level and then the business side has been a, a little slow so um thank you for that um as everybody most people know we you know lost emma in july and then um i'm also a nurse too so i work 
full time as a nurse, and then I run this business on the side. So, um, I was out of work for a while, and then now, yeah, now our well pump went out, and that was thirty four hundred dollars. So it's just been crazy. Yeah, I put your tweet up into the nest uh, for people to have a look at. There's ways that they can support you. Um, Like you said, you have a big sale going on right now. And um, if people retweet or uh, you have a pay PayPal, I think, um, or just uh, to purchase things for their pets. Yes, awesome. Thank you. And also, um, about um, Sean was talking about his... um, dog we me and him have been messaging each other as well but I want to let others know that we started this business um a little over two years ago when Emma was diagnosed with um degenerative joint disease and she was real stiff and she um limped a lot and was in pain and so we researched and um that's how we started this business is just with joint supplements originally and um so she was eight years old when she got diagnosed. So we started, um, we got somebody to make our joint supplements that we sell in our store and started her on those. And we got three more years out of her. Um, and you could never tell that she had like arthritis or the joint disease at all. <laughs> um, you know, she's a boxer and to live 11 years old, that's pretty good anyway, but mm-hmm. what got her was, She was eaten up with cancer just all over. But um, anyway, the joint, the joint supplements really helped her. So if anybody's dog has um, arthritis or hip dysplasia or anything like that, um, there's a few ingredients that you want to look for. One of the main ones is glucosamine. And so ours has that in it as a main ingredient. Um, but we have really good reviews, so you can check the website out. We also sell a liquid glucosamine that you can put, like, on their food and stuff. But So, yeah, um, if you have any issues with that, arthritis or whatever, um, that's a, a good um, way to go. I love it. Thank you for telling a little bit more about your story to everybody. I know I, I have a standard blurb that I read out, but it's definitely more impactful coming from you. Yes, I know. Um, I'm not a very, I don't like to speak. Um, <laughs> I wish I wish I could get um, more comfortable and better at it, and maybe I will. <laughs> it just it just takes practice. <laughs> I'm, I am Chris and I are lucky because we speak every day in front of people um, who are definitely less receptive to our mistakes. Like if I make a mistake in front of the high school kids, Oh, they know, they let me know about it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you for all everybody's support. You bet. We, we usually get a bunch of stuff at Christmas time. Um, so we're going to be looking at your website first. Okay, it looks like we're we th- we went uh, long today. It was like a, a, almost an hour and a half show. Um, Chris, do you have any final comments before we wrap stuff up? Are you there, Chris? Hello. Um, hi. Yeah, I had muted myself, so now I'm unmuted, and I was just telling a story. Um, but now I'm back, just back from unmute. Um. Yeah, so we're still very lucky that we have our dogs and Ginger because when you got home from work on Friday, (laughs) the front door was open. Yes, the front door was wide open. We have no idea if the dogs went out and gallivanted and then came back in, but... um, Or Ginger went outside and then came back in. Yeah, well, she probably looked and was like, poof, it's minus 16, minus 18, I'm not going to do it. Um but yeah, so that that was a thing. And you had got home first and I was driving. And so I had no idea that everybody was in the house until like I got home um, because, yeah. But that's that was kind of a, a, 
interesting time, wasn't it, Jason? Yeah, it was it was pretty spooky. I think Adam left the house in a hurry and uh, the door must have ricocheted ricocheted open. That's the yeah, only thing. It's minus, it's minus 18. Yeah, and nothing. It flash properly. Yeah, nothing works well when it's that cold. So he probably left the front door. He slammed it and it just slammed back open and he didn't take a look or maybe he had his headphones in. So I don't know how long the door was wide open for half a day, but all oh, of, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, no. like no. Out, an hour at least. No, I don't think so. Well, the, I mean, the dogs, when I came in, they were like, Hey, how's it going? And I was like, what, why is the front door open? And then Bunsen's like, I'm not telling you anything. I'm not a narc because he, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't tell me anything. Whenever Beaker would get into trouble, I was like, Bunsen, what is Beaker doing? And he would just like totally ignore me, not be helpful at all. He's like, I am not a narc. So he would be very, very a poor police dog. He would not be narking on anybody. The officer no. would be like, where's the drugs? And Bunsen would be like, I ain't no snitch. I'm telling you nothing. <laughs> Are you talking about the trucks? I don't know anything about the trucks. Yeah, he would not be yeah. helpful at all. So as we round out a couple things in... Uh, okay, as we round out, uh, as we round out just a couple things, our sp- our uh, partner Indra, she runs spaces three times a week, and the the one that runs on Monday is this awesome space with live music. I put it up in the nest. It's called Music Vibes. Um, I've been to it many times. It's so good. Uh, the live music is excellent. Like all of these artists are super cool, and and it's a varied. Like sometimes it's a a singer songwriter. Sometimes it's somebody that um, writes uh, electronic like dance music. So it it's totally different every week. It's not the same genre of music. So if that's up your alley, take a look at Indra's uh, space. And then also um, just a quick plug for a couple things. Uh, the Paw Pack Plus is the community that Chris and I worked really hard in the summer to develop. And it's got over, it's got a hundred, close to 300 people that are part of it now. And uh, it there's a paid side, which it has three different tiers. And if you're wondering how expensive it is, the, there's three tiers and they're, they, it's $10, $20, and then $30 for the different things that are opened up with the different tiers. Um, and that's um, a month, but we also have a six month and a 12 month subscription, which knocks off a month and two months. So, um, the folks that signed up for a year at the $10 a month amount, it, it averages out, I think to eight bucks or something like that. If you want to commit to a year, we're so excited. Now. All right. Wow. What a great space, Chris. Um, are I you, know. are you hungry? I haven't had supper yet. I had an apple before we started. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who came to our space tonight. I want to thank Bark and Beyond Supply.com. Our partner, Indra, thank you so much for being our partner for like, what is it, three or four months now? Um, Indra runs great spaces on wellness, meditation, mindfulness, um, stuff that I don't know anything about, but Indra knows a lot about. <laughs> and uh, also thanks to Joseline for in the summer um, giving us and working with us to set up the Paw Pack Plus. And if that's something that's in your area of interest, please sign up. We'd love to see you there. There is so much content on the Pop Pack Plus. To all the Pop Pack Plus members, thank you for joining up. And to the Pop Pack, Pop Pack Plus folks, hi Paula, I see you on the Pop Pack. Um, listening in, we can run spaces from the Pop Pack Plus. This is the, the great test tonight. There is no side chat space this Tuesday. Um, I am interviewing a fairly famous. Uh, veterinarian um, who is the veterinarian for a whole bunch of Hollywood celebrities so I didn't actually